Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the CarPro Inner QD. And this is CarPro's uh, interior detailer. And for those of you that don't know what an interior detailer is, essentially it's a light duty uh, cleaner just to clean any light soil, everyday traffic uh, in and out of your vehicle or any light debris. And so today we're gonna to be going over the product description. We're gonna be doing some empirical tests and then I'm gonna share my thoughts about this product after. So uh, starting off with the price point, the inner QD, uh, the 16 ounce bottle we have here goes for $25 Canadian. They offer a one liter size for $34 Canadian and then you can get the gallon size for $93 Canadian. So the bigger size, the more cost effective it will be. Um, it is not dilutable, it's ready to use product. A little bit goes a long way. Uh, you don't need a lot of this product to uh, clean and maintain your vehicle. Now, the one thing, even though the presentation is really nice from this product, I do like CarPro's presentation. The one thing I would encourage them, and I encourage every company to do that, should have their own SDS um, QR codes right on the bottle. So we're able to get direct information for this product when needed in terms of safety. I think SDS sheets are very overlooked and very underrated. Not a lot of people take them seriously. And there's a lot of information for people to get educated and use these products safely. And I do think that uh, we need to see this more and more because I could not find any of the SDS sheets anywhere online. I had to reach out directly to CarPro and uh, they responded in a very quick, timely manner and uh, they provided me with the SDS sheets for this product. But I do think they need to have something on their bottles uh, for us to have access to all their information, especially when it comes down to uh, safety data sheets. Now, what interests me to try out this product was mainly the claims they make with their anti-static and antimicrobial properties this product has, and the fact that it does not have any uh, siloxine or any type of dressing characteristics in this formula. Uh, typically, I like a natural uh, finish and look behind. I don't like any uh, anything that would alter the uh, look or feel of my interior surfaces. Now, the first thing that really impressed me with this product was the scent. It has a really nice lemon citrus scent, and it's not a masking uh, scent or fragrance it actually leaves a really nice fresh smell behind it's very enjoyable and you know when you get into your vehicle the next day you really uh, get that really nice fresh smell and your vehicle does actually feel clean now user experience is very straightforward very easy to use uh, the bottle has very clear directions how to use the product so essentially you want to uh, spray directly onto a towel and then wipe off and then simply just uh, fill up with a dry towel in case you see any streaking. Now this product will not typically streak. It will potentially streak if you lose if you use a lot of product. That's why you, you don't want to use too much. I don't recommend you spraying this directly onto any surface uh, because of the formulation it could potentially damage permanently uh, some of your delicate uh, surfaces because this product uh, does contain some hydrogen peroxide in here. To avoid that, just uh, directly spray onto a towel and then uh, wipe off immediately. It is safe for in infotainments, uh, plastics, vinyls, uh, leather, and even carbon fiber. Now, it will streak on glass. I did test that, and it will streak on your infotainment screens. So you need to either buff it right away with the dry side of your towel or use a secondary towel to uh, buff off the excess streaking and you need to do that immediately. Now, I did also use this product and tested it on my carpets and upholstery. Uh, because carpet and upholstery does tend to trap a lot of odors and bacteria, um, I just lightly sprayed this on there and uh, lightly uh, wiped with a microfiber rag uh, just to kind of see what it does. And I didn't have any concerns. It did not damage the upholstery. It didn't stain it or discolor anything. It left a really nice scent behind. Now, when it came down to the uh, anti-static properties that they claim, um, I was disappointed to see that it, this product doesn't live, live up to its claims in that category. Uh, after maybe a week, I noticed that my dash collected a lot of contamination. And when it came down to the infotainment, I know that they have... Uh, they, they do kind of consider this to be like anti-smudge in a way that you see reduced smudging, but that wasn't the case. My infotainment screen, as you see, besides the linting uh, that you see over the, 
the panel. You did uh, see here smudging, so it didn't really reduce or do much. It felt like normal to me. And so I'm not sure if anti-static is just a selling feature or a gimmick, but to me uh, and other products that I use that do claim to have anti-static properties, they never lived up to that claim. So I'm not sure if that's just a marketing uh, selling point, but uh, it didn't uh, really live up to the expectation. Now they do say that this product will leave a satin finish behind. And sure enough, when I did my 50-50 test on my panel, you would notice a difference where this product actually darkens the plastics and it also leaves it slick behind. So you notice a little slickness. Um, it, you won't really notice this if you are wiping down your vehicle. It's a very low key, very mild uh, darkening effect. Now, I'm not sure how I felt about that as I do like a natural look and feel left behind and this altered it slightly. And like I mentioned, it wasn't the any silo sign in here. Uh, what makes that uh, satin look apparently is the properties from the anti-static formulation in here is what causes that apparently. But I did want it to see if that also leaves any hydrophobic properties behind. So I did a quick test on the panel and I also tested my carpets and upholstery. And I noticed on the panel a little bit of repellency. When it came down to the carpets and the upholstery, I did notice that uh, the water soaked through. I didn't see any uh, beading or any water left on the top of the surface. So this is not like a hydrophobic uh, product. It's not going to uh, leave behind any uh, hydrophobicity or any repellency, any water repellency behind. Now, when it came down to the antimicrobial properties, here's where things got interesting for me. And here's where I had a lot of questions. I wanted to find out where this product falls under, under what cleaning category. Is it a cleaner? Is it a sanitizer? Is it a disinfectant? And typically in disinfectants, you need it to sit wet on a surface between three to five minutes in order for the product to kill all viruses, bacteria from the surface. Now we do know based on studies that a microfiber rag and a surfactant is going to clean and remove 80 to 90 percent of bacteria from the surface just from cleaning with a microfiber and a surfactant now having said that because this product here does contain hydrogen peroxide which has which means that it has properties uh, that is able to kill bacteria the part where i question it is the dwell time on their instructions, they don't state anywhere that we need to let this product dwell for three minutes to five minutes in order for us to disinfect. So I'm not sure if this product is categorized as a disinfected or a sanitizer, it just says antimicrobial. So is it just a cleaner that has a boost formulation because of the hydrogen peroxide, it's able to maybe remove a pretty effective uh, most of the bacteria like any other surfactant would. Is that what they mean by this? Because to the average consumer, the first thing that comes in mind when you read this, you automatically think this is going to be a disinfectant. And I think that could be misleading. And I'm not saying that this is something CarPro has intended to do, but the labeling could mislead the consumer by thinking that this is what it does. And the dangers with that is that if we let this dwell on a surface because of the hydrogen peroxide, um, on delicate surfaces, it could potentially do some permanent damage. And I will show you that during the testing later where I did some testing up around this as well. So it would have been really nice for CarPro since we don't have the capacity to have a lab and actually see what exactly is the antimicrobial properties capable of. It would have been nice if CarPro could give us a nice lab video on their, on their uh, YouTube channel or on social media showcasing this product and the antimicrobial properties of actually what it does um, you know, in their labs. So it would be a peace of mind for the consumer to understand better this product. All right, so let's jump into the empirical testing that I did. All right, so we want to check out the pH on the product, and they do state that it is a pH of 8. Um, with my testing here, it did indeed read it was a pH of uh, 8, and then I did the test strip testing as well, and it was reading between 7 and 8. 
So it does seem that it is actually a pH neutral formula, which is good to see. And then for the next test, I wanted to see if it's gonna be caustic or not. And so the way we do that is we take room temperature water and we temp it, and then we add a little bit of the solution in there, the chemical. And if we see it jump more than three degrees, anywhere from three to 10, that means that it's caustic, but it only jumped uh, one degree. So that was a good sign. Next here, we're going to do the scratch test. So I have an acrylic panel, which is fully polished. There's no scratching. And I'm going to use a microfiber rag and I'm going to give it a few wipes up and down very lightly just to see the lubrication properties of this product. And I'm also going to use a very soft bristle brush. I just want to give it a few passes here just to kind of see how aggressive this is or how well it would work with this product. And I noticed there was a lot of streaking left behind and I also noticed a lot of marring on the brush side. So I give it a quick buff gently uh, with no pressure. And then I went back and visited the panel and I noticed on the microfiber side, there was no marring. I noticed a little bit of marring on the bottom right, but nothing significant. But when we went over to the brush side, there was a lot of heavy marring and a lot of damage on the panel. So I wouldn't recommend you using any type of brushes for your delicate uh, interior surfaces. Now for the next test, I'm going to do the residue test. I'm going to spray on a fall leather uh, surface and I'm gonna let it dry for a day. And then we're gonna come back and see if it's gonna permanent damage that surface. And so here we are a day later, and we noticed that it left an oily film behind. So we're just gonna simply reactivate it with uh, NRQD. And we're gonna give it a few passes just to kind of see if uh, it's going to leave anything permanent behind or if it's gonna leave a uh, clean finish. And so after buffing it off, I noticed that it left a little bit of a slick finish behind and a satin look, but I didn't see any permanent damage on the fall leather. Uh, so it looks like it is safe, but I would never recommend you spraying directly on any surface for that matter. This is just for testing purposes. And then I did the same test on an acrylic panel. Uh, this is the best way to gauge how safe a product is. And again, I'm going to let it dry for a day and come back. And as we see, it left again an oily finish. And we do see some blotchy spots around. So we're going to go ahead and uh, reactivate it now and give it a few passes to see if it damaged this surface. And I did notice there was some blotchy spots on the top left there uh, where it did leave some uh, staining. So I tried to buff it off and uh, I noticed that uh, the staining was not going away. So sadly, this product, and I think that's because of the hydrogen peroxide, um, I think that it permanently damaged the acrylic. And as you see here, you see all the blotchiness and all those chemical spots. So unfortunately, it looks like the um, formulation is not really safe for uh, gentle uh, surfaces. And so that was very unfortunate to see. Now here, I just want to mimic a everyday situation. Most of us and, uh, you know, males and females tend to use lotion, tend to use some uh, sunscreen, uh, tend to use some mascara maybe or some makeup. And a lot of times we tend to spill our coffee. So I wanted to test these products on a fa um, leather surface. And let's hope my wife doesn't see this wondering where her makeup went 
so I did layer a thick film of uh, all these different products onto this surface. And I also made some juicy burgers and I put some oil residue there just to mimic somebody eating cheeseburgers in their cars. And so I left it for 72 hours and then I came back to see how CarPro is able to tackle each uh, contaminant. So I did a gently uh, rub on the sides and it looks like it was able to uh, wipe off easily. So then I went and I gave one spritz to each section just to kind of see with some agitation with a microfiber towel how much uh, is CarPro able to remove from each section. And I noticed that for the first test with just a microfiber rag and one pass, it definitely struggled with the foundation and definitely struggle with the uh, lotion and the uh, sunscreen. It did a little bit better on coffee, obviously. It was a lot easier to remove. So I hit it again with the uh, Ninja Scrubby. And because the Ninja Scrub is a little bit of a more aggressive and effective uh, media, it was able to remove more of the contaminants from each section easier uh, in conjunction with the CarPro. And so we did notice that when you use that combo together, you get really good results. I did notice there was still a film left behind on the sunscreen and the foundation. So top right and bottom left. So what I'm doing here, I'm going to give the whole panel a thorough cleanup. So I give it a good scrub and now I'm going to give it a good wipe down with a towel. And again, I noticed that uh, it left a slick feel behind, but it looks like everything got removed. I didn't see any staining or any films left behind. Now here I want to do the emulsification test. So I just grabbed a floor mat that is obviously soiled and I just give it a single pass with a microfiber towel just to see how capable it is removing uh, dirt from floor mats. And I'm going to let it air dry now and we come back to see that uh, it didn't really do much with a single pass. So emulsification is not really strong on this product, which is to be expected because it is a quick detailer. It's not an actual interior cleaner, but when you give it some good elbow grease, um, we noticed that we got pretty good results after. Uh, it actually left a pretty clean uh, floor mat behind. And here I wanted to see if the product actually suds up, if we're going to see any foam or any lather. And this product does not lather or it does not foam, just for your information. All right, guys, so based on the test we did here today, based from my experience, overall, it's a pretty decent product. I think it's still a little bit pricey. I was disappointed with the anti-static properties. They didn't live up to their claim. I'm a little bit confused with the antimicrobial claims. I'm not sure what exactly that means. And when it came down to user experience, it's fantastic. Like I said, the smell is probably the biggest selling point for me. One of the best smelling products out there for sure. Uh, very versatile, really good cleaning power. Uh, we put it through the test and we did a little bit of uh, extreme testing, I guess, but still it uh, did pretty good um, under those conditions. And if you do like and appreciate the satin look, then uh, this is something to consider. And so having said that, guys, that's going to be a wrap for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope this uh, video was helpful. Uh, and until the next one, happy detailing. Take care.